Trophy Horse, with your hosts, Tricky Nick, Alex, I yield to no one, Sid, and Ender Phoenix.
Hell's Horses, that music still kicks ass. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Trophy Horses, episode 620, and have no fear. I may be hosting, but you know what? We got our man Tricky back. Tricky, how you feeling? Uh, I've had better days, sir. I've had better days. Well, we're just glad you're, uh, you're vertical, you're breathing, and you're, you're here on Trophy Horse with us. So, well, I'm glad to be back, but it's it's been a rough week. Yeah, and the Rangers have Rangers been playing well, so at least you got that to to be grateful for. Yeah, they won again today. Uh, fifth game of the playoffs. They're undefeated in the playoffs so far, knock on wood. Uh, but the end kind of scared me a little bit. I hope you actually knocked on some wood there, not some fake ass with some faux wood, because that's going to bring bad luck, you know. I, I, brought, I knocked on real wood. Oh, well, <laughs> I bet that's true. He always brings the awesome in Hell Divers too. And whatever he plays, it's I yield to no one. The Jedi had their day, for today is Revenge of the Fifth. Yes, and if you've been playing Rocket League, you've noticed that there is a not a, a free a freemium Darth Maul decal for the Octane, uh, which you can earn through various reward and various challenges. So, uh, if you're a Star Wars fan, if you're a fan of the Sith, go there and get the uh, the Darth Maul decal because it looks pretty damn awesome. So, and. Also joining us, he keeps the fires burning, and he always has a flamethrower at his side. It's Ender Phoenix, also known as Matt, more affectionately. Matt, it's you. Jedi, Sith, I'm just a simple man trying to make his way through the universe. One flame burst at a time. One napalm artillery at a time. Well, glad to have the crew all back together. Uh, did you guys have a good, uh, was the force with you all on May 4th? Did you all have a good weekend so far and a good week? Tricky, we know you're, you're, you've are you been recovering, so um, this weekend's been derby. It was derby yesterday, so with all the festivities, Louisville's been a bit crazy. We're getting ready to have a PGA Tour event here, so that's going to back up tra- traffic near me. So uh, things have been a, little, been a little hectic here in Louisville, but uh, what about for you guys, Yield and, uh, and Matt? How's your week's been? It's been an okay weekend. You know, I'm trying to think. I had the house basically to myself all day yesterday while V was out doing things for her friend's bachelorette party. And I got some chores done and I got some gaming gun done. So, you know, to me, yes, it's been a good weekend. And you know what? I bet we're, we're going to hear about that gaming and what we've been playing. But first, Matt, you know what we got to do? You don't like them. You don't want to hurt them. But, man, I got some new trophies this week. So how about we talk about our updated trophy counts. Tricky, would you like to read your own count? Uh, if I had the agenda up, I would. Oh, look, Tricky pulled an Alex and doesn't have the agenda up. I I mean, I have the agenda up, but I just don't know where it is. I am level 906, total trophies of 30,344 with 842 platinums. Very good, sir. I am level 503, total trophy count of 9,772, and platinum count of 169. In 168 games, I got eight trophies this week. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks to a new game I'm playing. Well, not a new game, but a new game to me. Yield, sir. Level 509 with a trophy count of 10117 and a new platinum count of 187. Matt? Still stuck at level 220 with 1,310 trophies and zero platinums, but I did earn a new Steam achievement today. Dark Matter in Starfield, eliminate 300 human enemies. You know, coming off last week's show, Matt, that sounds like bot talk. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe they were what, bots underneath the flesh. What do you have to say? What do you have, have you, to say for yourself? Have you seen bots? They tend to bleed red stuff, and I have questions. What? Sid is level 889, total trophy count of 26,984, and a platinum count of 842. So, Matt, you said you got some gaming done this weekend while V was away. Whoa, 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 whoa. You guys give me shit all the time about how I'm behind Sid, and now I'm level with him, and you don't say shit about it? 100%, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. What the fuck? It's not like you... Just kick, a, just kick a man when he's down while you're at it. I said I was glad you were back. What else do you want me to do for you? 
You want me to throw you a party? You want to get some streamers in here? Get you a uh, Fudgy the Whale I mean, cake? Uh, I mean, yeah, I want a Fudgy the Whale cake. you on the PlayStation Network can gladly go over, unless you're on your five, can go over to what's new and see that you've been spamming your spam games to catch Sid. I, I, so, I, I did not. I did not. You did not. I, so where did your Platinums come from other than the Suicide Squad? I don't know. Yeah, but he already because, had that last week. you had one the other night for, like, Tokyo Rush or something. I got that this so morning. don't tell me that's not a spam game. I got that this morning. Okay, so. I, oh, oh, okay, I apologize. I I didn't spam them, but I did play three spam games. So you spammed them? Well, yes, but not really. What? You know what Tricky is illogical today? He's having mental I, I'm about. I'm really out of it, but um <laughs> I'm he's yeah. medicated, so I'm not gonna give him too much shit about it. I, I, I legit forgot what I got the button saying. <laughs> you know what? We will acknowledge that Sid let Tricky catch up to him. Because I got high. Because I got high. Oh yes. my god. I'm so Matt, him. sir, what have you been playing? Starfield we know. That's a given. What else have you been playing? Uh, before I go into that, Saber just jumped into chat. Ao, he says, which is you know, I, even I remember as an old Razor Ramon thing. So I, you know, that's my wrestling uh, talk this week. That's that's what you all got out of me. Yeah, but hopefully Saber's out there wearing gold chains and throwing toothpicks at people. <laughs> so this week was some Mass Effect Legendary Edition playing through the first Mass Effect. Got through a couple missions there. Played some Valheim on a Channel 3 user. Her name is You Exorcist, and uh, played with a bunch of her friends, did some of that. Played through a significant amount of Baldur's Gate 3 with some friends where, you know, sowing seeds of doubt and chaos amongst all the people trying to scheme and, and use our characters. So uh, the fun part of that was using a level 5 fireball on a whole bunch of rats in a basement. So... Take that for what you will. A stealth action game called Aragami 2, which is a co-op game as well. So you and up to two of your friends can go on stealth ninja missions. And it was a lot of fun being efficient. And then when shit hits the fan, you, you can still try to fight your way out of it. And then, yes, I was playing Starfield because uh, some people, who the guys I usually play Fallout 76 with were playing other things, and I felt like getting back into a single uh, FPS RPG. And, yeah, you know, Starfield scratching the itch. I, I had some a lot of fun playing through some of the space missions and shooting down pirate ships. So, yeah, you know, I think they've done well with the game. So it was enough for me to get back into that. But that's all I've really been doing this week. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought I saw something online uh, where they had recently boosted the, the frame per second to 60. So what they actually did was when the game came out, they didn't have NVIDIA's DLSS or AMD's FSR frame generation. And there, you actually had to have a uh, third-party mod to get some frame generation on the newer cards. So they finally input DLSS and FSR into the game, which means that your card's rendering at a lower resolution, but upscaling it to the higher resolution for the monitor, which gives you more frames per second because it's not processing as much. So I was I enabled that, and now on my system, I'm getting about you know 80 to 90 frames per, per second on the game, which is sufficient. Gotcha. So Witchcraft. They did it through Witchcraft. It's, yeah, yeah I, you know, I know he doesn't work for that portion of the company, but uh, our good friend Jeff Hanna can definitely, I'm sure, talk about frame generation and DLSS and things like that on, on the programming end. Oh, boy, another reason to have Jeff Hanna on. Let's make that happen. <laughs> Yield, what have you been up to this week, sir? So I've been playing some Helldivers 2, been playing some Rocket League, been playing some Sackboy, A Big Adventure, and my newest platinum was a game called Lake. I actually started playing that, so I'm somewhat familiar with that game. It's a very chill game. Like it is a very like, chill game. You're a very you're a delivery person in a small town, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, 
every once in a while it's nice to have those games you know you're playing your hell divers you got your high intensity going and then you just kind of want to chill with the game like lake so it's a uh, wait did you buy that yield or did you get it on sale because i know it i'm pretty sure it's a playstation plus catalog game but obviously yeah. you don't have playstation plus uh except for the basic so yeah i got it on a sale okay all right tricky sir uh, what have you been up to in your platinum spamming week I've been playing a bunch of games. Uh, I've been struggling to find a game to play lately. Um, so my three spam ones were Perry Pig Jump, um, Sprint Journey Nitro, and Tokyo Run. Perry Pig Jump sounds like a game they play at like kindergarten for like learning classes. Like here, it's learning time, kids. Perry Pig Jump. Um, so actually a little bit different than the other jump games, but uh, definitely easy. Um. Went back to Fallout, uh, not Fallout, uh, Fall Guys. Uh, just want like chill and just very different there. No one's confusing Fall Guys for Fallout. Uh, played a little Sackboy. Um, I, I I started playing on the PS5 because that's what Yield's playing on, and I figure at some point you know we're gonna link up to do the multiplayer trophy. So I'm trying to work my way through that. Um, and I've been playing a new game called uh, Geometric Sniper. I don't, it's not new, but it's new to me. Um, yeah, same. I mean, we, we get we get that. Um, it's a, I, th- I think it's a game Yield would actually like. It's, you know, you're playing a sniper, and you have to find the target. They give you clues. Uh, the first four, they give you, like, uh, a, they give you a picture of who you're trying to take down. And then in the fifth one, you have to protect somebody. So you have to, you know, search the field and, uh, you know, find the sniper before they take out your target. Um, it's, it seems pretty interesting. Um, good to get into it, but it, it excuse me. Sorry. Um, I think it's like $3, but it's, it's pretty interesting. It's not, it's not a spam game and it takes some work, uh, I'm, right now, I'm stuck on, I think it's the 8th level, where you have to take out two targets at, at the same time. But the problem is that once you take out the first target, because he's standing right next to the other target, the other target runs, and then you only have, like, each level, you only have the number of bullets to take out your targets. You cannot miss a shot. So you have to zoom in. You have to, you know, it's uh, similar to, uh, was it, Sniper Elite? Is the other game you play Yield? Yes. Um, you have to hold your breath. You have to, you know, your your crosshairs is constantly moving. It's it's pretty interesting. Um, I think you'd like it. It's only like three dollars yield. I think you should check that check it out. Um, and played a little bit of Hogwarts. Played a little bit of Division. Played a little bit of Rocket League. Played a little bit of Suicide Squad. Played a little bit of God of War Ragnarok. Played a little bit of Horizon Forbidden West. Played a little Hull Divers. Just. I, I've been struggling to find you a game to play. You played Helldivers? I did. I only played like two matches. Uh, played with randoms. And then I rage quit on the second time because I get, kept getting killed by my teammate. I don't know if it was intentional or not intentional, but like I just I didn't have the patience to deal with it. So. Hey, y'all, that's that guy from Trophy Horse. So I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. Um... Yeah, but I've been I've been just struggling to play. I, I even downloaded uh, Red Dead Redemption Two. Was gonna start that, and then got to the menu, and I was like, Nah, I don't want to play this. Maybe all you need is to play some Division Two and just enjoy that, and maybe the, you know, well, your, uh, you'll find a new game. You'll stumble upon a new game that you actually want to play. Well, the, the thing about Division Two is because uh, was it was this week? It was this week. Um, this season story finally wrapped up, and it was one of those moments where. I've been saying something for four years now, and the story actually came true and proved me right. And it was one of those moments like, I fucking told you, and there was nobody around. So I had I got Tross involved, and I got Tross to the point, and Tross is like, what? I'm like, I fucking told you. He goes, damn it, you are right. So I, that's my one shining moment this week is that being proven right after four years. If there's no one around to hear it, does it actually happen? Mm-hmm. But I see. Right, on, I, t- I see. On the, take your word for it, Tricky. I see. It, well, I, I would say what it is, but you know, not that you guys care. But you know, anybody that plays the game, I don't want to spoil something if they haven't gotten to it yet. Because the second it happened, in because uh, I'm in a, a division Facebook group, 
everybody was spamming. I was like, guys, give like this is two hours after it went live. Give people a chance to play this. And it's 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 not like one of those things where it's like, oh well, you know, I'll give it reasonable time. It came out at four o'clock and at six o'clock you guys are posting the spoilers. Like people aren't even awake yet. I hate to tell you this tricky, but the internet didn't give it the internet does not give a shit. It's I know. full of people who do not give two fucks about well, whether and you know that there's those people out there that get their jollies, jollies off by ruining things for people. Like, they're at the movie theater, and they'll, like, come out of the theater, and then they'll, like, scream stuff to the people in line. Yeah, I fucking hate that. Well, um, But, you know, we'll, we'll get into uh, the internet raging in our topics today. <laughs> the internet loveth, and the internet hateth. So. so. Uh, uh, but, yes. I, I, be- oh, sorry, Tricky. I didn't mean to jump ahead there. If you got no, something no. else you wanted to share. I just wanted to say two things. One... Um, I'm going to be out of work for a little while, so I'm probably going to try to cap my time and, uh, do a couple extra live streams, some marathons to raise money. Um, so that's one thing. And two, if on this episode, I say something like really, really stupid that I normally like even more stupid than I normally say, please forgive me. Cause I'm loopy and I didn't want to miss the show, but I'm having memory losses, uh, apparently. So I just want to put it out there that if I say something like, Really outrageous. Just give me a pass for this week, please. Alex shows yours. I'm sorry. That's why That's why Alex is hosting, because I just didn't trust myself to host this properly. There's a bunch of names in the notes that he can't pronounce. That's why he wanted me to host the show. Um, uh, no, so uh, we'll get to that internet rage, um, because it's about a game that I've been playing this week, uh, Helldivers 2. Um, lots of news on that. Uh, but just real quick, I mean... Honestly, since it came out, I've played pretty much almost every single day, uh, except for the last. I haven't played today, and I didn't play yesterday, uh, because quite frankly, I'm pretty much maxed out on my medals, my war bond medals, and the fact that I can't earn any more by playing games makes me feel like, well, there's no point to be playing the game anymore until I can buy something. So I kind of think they fucked up by capping the war medals, because again, you get a certain amount and you can't get any more, so why the fuck am I going to play anymore? So, um, yeah, that's not tied into the controversy, but I definitely think they need to make it where you can, there's no cap on the war, the war bomb medals, or at least double or something like that. It's, it's 250, which is, um, really not that hard to reach. So, uh, played some Rocket League, uh, getting some of the X-Men goodies from the X-Men 97 promotion or crossover, I should say, as well as playing some last night to try to get the Darth Maul decal for the Octane um, and my new trophies, uh, the game I jumped into was Dave the Diver. And I have to say that the mantra that Jeff Hanna is always right is very, is continuing very strongly, like an unstoppable train because that game is incredibly fun. Uh, very unique. I mean, look, I like Hell Divers, but let's be honest, it's a third person shooter. Like really how much can you innovate on that? Um, like core mechanics and stuff like that. I'm not saying it's not his own game. It's its own game, but you know, it's not as say off the beaten path as something like Dave the Diver. Uh, Jeff has come on here and talked about it. Matt talked about it a little bit ago or uh, last week. Um, but yeah, but essentially you uh, they like each, you don't go by levels. There are different missions, but you go day by day. You can dive once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and at night. You help run the sushi restaurant. You know, you hire employees to help run things. As you get more and more customers, you take food to customers. You serve them green tea. Uh, you uh, uh, make sure there's enough wasabi because you can't make the sushi without wasabi. So basically, um, every every day has you dive twice, or you know, you dive once if you don't if you don't want to. You can fast forward time. Uh, but yeah, you basically you are helping run the sushi restaurant and diving to go get the uh, the fish to serve the people. Um, the, uh, it's like I said, it's a lot of fun. Um, there, it, there are kind of like progression elements. So you can imp- over the time you make more money, you can improve your scuba gear to make you dive fat, dive, uh, uh deeper, um, <laughs> dive fatter. Cause Dave is fat. You know what he's, yeah, Matt, I was going to call him out on it, but you know, he's, he's a master diver to, despite his, uh, his girth. Um, everybody's so mean to him. I feel yeah, bad. people people just shit on him, but everyone needs his help. So Dave's Dave's the man. Uh, but yeah, you can dive deeper. You have more air, which is essentially your health. So if you get attacked by enemies, I should say sharks or like barracudas or something, you lose your air, and that's essentially your life bar. Um, 
but yeah, you, you basically can upgrade everything to where you can carry more fish. Um, so the, the, the more you play, you know, the, the, the more you're able to explore. Um, yeah. And I really like the game. They've got like the cell phone app, the cell phone with a bunch of apps, essentially kind of the menu system where there's an encyclopedia of all the things that you've caught, where it's basically like Pokemon where like each fish ha- or creature has its own card and it gives you like a, a little collection thing to unlock them all. So, um, You've got different little side missions along the way, helping researchers and whatnot. So, yeah, there's more than just the main storyline. There's more than just the sushi restaurant aspect of it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoy the game. Um, if you've ever played Song of the Deep, it's got kind of a, a view like that when you go underwater. Um, but, yeah, I mean, overall, I think I think it's a very good game. And it's uh, if you look at the trophy list, it doesn't seem like it's going to be too difficult of a platinum to get. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's got it. It's got one of those little, it's got some light inventory management, which I, I really enjoy. For some reason, just inventory management is one of those things in a video game that just really kind of sets it over the mountain for me, where it's, you know, it takes a great game and makes it really fucking great. So, uh, but yeah, Dave the Diver is, uh, is a lot of fun. Yeah. And, oh, I was going to say, there's so much depth to that game. I am, God, how many hours am I into this game? I'm about 10 hours in and they're still introducing new concepts and things to, to be used. And it's, it's just first being what it is. It is just an excellent little game. Yep. You get to set your own sushi menu. And if you've got an abundance of fish and you need to make more money, you can sell fish at the market. Uh, Matt, your buddy. Um, oh, what's his name? It's not, what is his name? The guy in the boat. Cobra. Cobra. He has his own shop. How do you get to his shop to sell stuff? Before you dive on the boat, there's a yeah. little, uh, if you walk up to him, mm-hmm. you'll have the opportunity to hit, uh, it's probably going to be square square. Cause that talks to him in the evening. I've talked to him before going to the sushi restaurant, but yeah, yeah. It, at some point he's going to talk to you about his shop and if he hasn't already said it, but he talks to you about his shop and you go up to him and you'll have the option to talk or shop. Okay. I must not have gotten there yet because I'm still – I can't remember what mission I'm on, but I've, I've found the – I played about three hours, and I've gone through numerous days, but I kind of ignored the uh, the main story missions because I've just kind of been fucking around and selling sushi. So, And the fact that, that game is cut into days where you could do two dives and then st- and open the sushi shop and, and run the restaurant at night, and then you kind of could quit playing if you don't have enough time or don't have a lot of time. It's one of those games where it's easy to do that. It's also a game where it's easy to be like, just one more day, just one more day. Yeah, absolutely. There's plenty of times that I'm like, I, all right, I could do another dive. I want more fish to, to add because the other portion of that is the sushi menu. You use the fish you catch to upgrade your sushi dishes, which gives you higher level sushi, which gets you more money when people buy it. Yeah, and you also there will be also be customers that come in with special requests. Like one of the missions is you have to go kill a reef shark and serve its head to a, a specific patron who becomes like your um, PR, your your HR person to help you hire people. So, so there is a, a story embedded in the game, and uh, very early on, you are you kind of figure out that there's a. It's not just Godzilla that's a giant of the sea. There's another one lurking around and I'm assuming the story goes d- deeper into that uh, as it introduces the creature very early on. But um, yeah, I'm enjoying my time. It seems like Matt's enjoying his time and you know, tricky, maybe Dave, the diver is the game for you, but you got some DLC for what you've been playing. Yeah. I forgot uh, one of the games that, cause I was looking at PSN profiles. Uh, I've been playing another game that I haven't earned a trophy in. That's a uh, dizzy speed storm. Um, that was a, Big thing for a bit over at Channel 3, you know, when people were getting off the Mario Kart teat, the Disney Speedstorm was a pretty big uh, run for, you know, two I'm, months or so. I'm actually enjoying myself with it. Um, it's it's very Mario Kart-esque, just with Disney characters. Um, but the, the only gripe I have with it so far is it's... It's very much a mobile game. It, you know, it's made by GameLoft, which is obviously, you know, pretty synonymous with um, well, mobile games. But it's... I'm enjoying myself. It's, you know, I'm, I'm playing this Mickey right now because I have uh, other 
the only other characters I've unlocked so far are Aladdin. Um, I'm forgetting names right now. The the chick from Monsters Inc. with the snakes heads. Anybody? 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 I know who you're talking about. I I can't remember the name for the life of me. Yeah, and I got um. I want to say Violet, but it's wrong. Penelope from Wreck It Ralph. Penelope. Penelope is Penelope. I got her and Wreck It Ralph. Um, but there's apparently like 57 characters in the game that you know you have to unlock a shard, certain number of shards, and then the character unlocks and whatnot. Um, you could buy them. I, I might be interested in buying the uh, season pass, but this one ends in seven days. So I didn't feel like, you know, spending the money for the season pass when it's just going to end and I'm not going to have enough time to get all the rewards anyway. But the cool thing is, is that even though this season is going to end, you could still go back and buy that season pass and earn those uh, things in the future. Uh, so they do future se- uh, past seasons as future seasons. So uh, randomly they do it like they do two previous seasons that you could unlock. So when this comes back around, I'll, I'll buy it again or I'll buy it and then I'll earn that way. So you can actually earn uh, three seasons worth of content as each new season goes on. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, very Mar- Mario Kart esque. Uh, each character uh, gets their own power ups um, and you just got to love up your characters. And I'm having a good time with it, but just haven't earned a trophy yet. But no platinum. So. That game doesn't have a platinum? No. That's surprising. But. So, yep, yeah, that's what I've been playing. Sorry. I forgot about it. No, you're fine. You're fine, sir. Well, maybe one day we'll get Disney Speedstorm as a PlayStation Plus free game. But for now, we'll have to settle for the ones that we're getting for May. This comes from the PlayStation blog, written by Adam Michael. Uh, the new lineup of games are coming to PlayStation Plus on May 7th. They are EA Sports Football Club 24, and PS Plus members can also pick up a starter pack, which includes 11 untradeable players rated 82 or above. Uh, if you, if you, plus we assume... I, I assume that's plus. if you play. <laughs> Is that supposed to be if you play, Matt? If you if pay you, for it. Yeah. <laughs> We assume yeah. that if you're familiar with the game, you know what that means. So, well, so here's here's the thing, it's it's EA, it's a sports game. So yeah, probably if you pay is the accurate term. Uh, Ghost Runner two for the PS five. Uh, the the football club is for PS four and PS five. Uh, Tunic for PS four PS five, which is a game I'm actually excited to play. I am too. Uh, so I think that's the I think that's the highlight of this this. Uh, bunch of games and then destiny 2 lightfall ps4 and ps5 note you will need destiny 2 base game to play which is also free to play uh note here i know that people were concerned that we were getting less and less ps4 games for the the free games the um but this month has three of the four are available for the playstation 4 so they're clearly not shying away just quite yet but all right i i, I get what you're trying to point out there alex but it, are we really getting ps4 games or are they just giving us the ps4 versions of the game along with the ps5 versions like these aren't standout PS4 games. This this is we're giving you okay, the PS5 well, game and uh, we'll we'll just bundle the four game with it. But weren't all these games like I don't know pro football the pro the foot uh, the football game like yeah that's newer. But Tunic wasn't that originally a PS4 game? That didn't come out to five, did it? I'm not Correct. sure. It, it's older than that, so they may have released a five version, but it came out on the PS4 first, I believe. Well, I'm all right. And I know Lightfall that had to come out on the PS4 first. Right. So here's the issue is is when you have things listed and the PlayStation blog is saying PS4, PS5, I really think they're just talking compatibility. I don't necessarily think that they're going with what versions are, are out there. They don't specify it in their article, so you have to assume at the base level that it's going to be, unless it's a PS5 only, that it's a PS4 game playable on the PS5. Right. Okay, so it did... Come out, it looks like, in 2022. Which was, the f- 5 was out by then. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, and EA Sports Football Club, that's basically FIFA now, right? They just had to rename it. Uh, I am not sure about that. I do my best to not pay attention to soccer. 
I think I think EA officially lost the FIFA license. Like FIFA wanted too much for the license, so they just can't call it FIFA anymore. I I'm yeah. not sure of that. Uh, but Tunic, I'm really looking forward to because that's the uh, that's the Zelda like game, the Zelda like right uh, game with the fox as the protagonist. I mean, that's more of a Zelda game than Breath of the Wild is. So, why do you bring up old shit? Are people tired there, of hearing that? See, there he goes. I just, don't know what he's talking about again. I, I just wanted to trigger Matt, and Matt had no reaction. Sorry, I was reading some more news. What am I supposed to be upset about? I was. I said Tunic <laughs> is more of a Zelda game than Breath of the Wild is. <laughs> the blood stare. <laughs> oh, sorry. If I'm not hosting, I gotta I gotta troll Matt a little bit. So, sorry. What are you talking about when you host, you troll people. Not not so much. Yeah. Whatever but, whatever you want to believe. But, I'm I'm really looking right, forward so, to Tunic. So Tricky and I are excited about Tunic. Uh, yield. Tunic you look. Is, tunic is the only thing to be really excited about, in my opinion. But I already bought it, so they're. But I'm glad that we finally had a, a good month. Well, it, we had a game. <sighs> To make it a good month after a few months of nah, I heard the ghost running games are good, but I think those are first person. Why so I never really looked at them. Really, I don't. I mean, maybe the people so, I've talked to said they're not good. So no, Ghost Runner actually has a, a pretty decent following. Um, obviously, enough for them to make a second one. I've seen gameplay. I was interested. But it's one of those games that I'm like, eh, I'll catch it on sale or something. Didn't Ghost Runner 2 just come out or they just announced it recently? Within the last year, I think it, it released. I thought I thought I thought one like it was a state of play or something like that. We saw a a, a trailer for Ghost like Runner. A, I thought that was two. Like Edge. So, yeah, we talked about it recently within the yeah, within the past year. So it's it's a relatively new game. Okay. People who like soccer will like the the freebie soccer game, but I mean, I, I I might check it out. I mean, I'm I'm not a big soccer guy, um, but I I might check Probably it out. Get a trophy for scoring your first goal. Probably, and that'd probably I'd be a probably good to get a trophy for for buying into the the EA <laughs> EA Play. And you know what? Those would be good accomplishments to share with your friends. Uh, this comes from the PlayStation blog, Sabrina Medits, introducing a new way to invite PlayStation 5 players into your multiplayer session. In the coming months, PlayStation will introduce the ability for gamers to generate a shareable link on your PS5 console or on uh, the PlayStation app and send it to other PS5 players. Recipients who open the link will be able to hop onto your multiplayer session if they aren't already friends with you on the PlayStation network. This will be just one more way to connect PS5 players and also includes a unique widget for PS5 sessions invites shared in Discord. Finally, at some point in the future, a new way to share your PlayStation Network profile, uh, profile on any messaging or social app by generating the link from the PlayStation app. Um, so, I've never found it hard to game with my friends on PlayStation 5, you, and Alex. it's really <sighs> easy to add people. So, what Thank the you, fuck Alex. is this doing? What is Thank this you, doing? Alex. Uh, what is, it, this sounds like this sounds like more work than what we already do. You, you, so, you, can you explain this to me? The best I understand it is what, what is Hiroki Totoki doing? What is what is your boy doing? Okay, the best way I can explain this, and I have to use Yield as an example. Yield and Riley, an example. There was a game they were trying to play. Uh, we are together, or we are here, and they were having a hard time. Link it up. Well, that's because they didn't do a very good job of explaining what pro, what name you needed to use to link Cor- up. Correct. What this, from my understanding, what this is is if me and Alex, I mean, we're we're PlayStation friends, but if Al, if I wanted to invite Alex or I wanted to invite Matt to a game, I can send them a link that will automatically link them to my game, and they I don't have to be PSN friends with them. But, but see, if you wanted to, if you wanted to play on the PS5 with him, why wouldn't you be friends anyway? He's saying like if there's like if you're on Steam, right? Like if if I wanted to play but, if I wanted to play Hell Divers with Matt, I can send him a link and he can join in. But I don't think it works Steam to PlayStation Five. I think this would give 
Matt a link for his PlayStation 5 to join my session. Well, this is just dumb. What it seems to me is that the problem is not with how the PlayStation handles allowing you people allowing people to join multiplayer games. The problem is how each individual each individual developer handles it. Because it's super fucking easy in Helldivers. It's super easy in Rocket League. Why can't people do that? Like why why can't more developers make it easier? Because so, when okay, go ahead, Matt. Sorry. Sorry. So you're asking what the ultimate purpose of this is. I, I think, and speaking from the Steam side of it, I've I've seen this be a thing where I have somebody I'm playing with, maybe we're in a party together and I want to get them into my game, but obviously you can't in a private party, you can't just run or jump a jump into a a person's game. That's not your friend. So this gives somebody the ability to go, Hey, you're a friend of my friend. I want to get you in this game. Here's a link. And that way you don't actually have to become friends with this individual. It's just a quick, dirty, easy way for you to say, hey, here's a link, join the game. And you don't have to go through the whole friendship montage. And, and just just throw an example like that. Like I'm in the uh, Division Facebook group. If somebody goes on there and says, hey, we need one more person for the raid, they can just send me a link and I can join in on the raid without having to become their PlayStation friend. I guess I, I still think this is kind of pointless. It, it's so, it's Sony being Sony and taking two steps back because the developer. Yeah, I don't have a problem getting in get, getting in games. The developers have their own way of of invitate you know inviting. I the game <laughs> that I've played. I don't have a problem. I don't I don't think this is designed to be a replacement for the friend system or, you know, what developers do. I think this is just an alternative way of saying, hey, we met on Facebook. You know, if 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 Yield, you were to go in and say, hey, I need one more person to help me complete this mission on Helldivers, this is a way for somebody to jump into your game without having to go through the, I got to send you a friend request, what's your PSN ID, got to wait for you to accept it, got to wait, you know, send... Got to send the game invite. You have to accept it. This is just a way of saying, here's a link. Boom, you're in my game. Okay, but where is this link being sent to? Yeah, you still you, you still can, you, have you, to have their, their PSN name. No, so you don't. Just no, 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 no. That's what this is avoiding. So I, how do I send it to them then? Because in the in the PlayStation app, you can or on the system itself, you can generate a code, and the code will be sent to a social media platform. So if I go on, like if I go onto the division group, and say, "Hey, I need seven people to do this raid with me," I just put on the QR code or the link or whatever it is in the group, and people don't have to go, "What's your PSN ID?" They just scan the code or hit the link, and they're automatically into my group. I don't have. Uh, that just sounds too much of a pain in the butt. It, it, but what you guys like, I, I, I hear what you're saying. They're saying like, Hell Divers, Rocket League, all that stuff. They. They do a good enough job where you can invite your friends into the thing. There's not really an issue. This is just to me, the way I'm taking it, is it is an extra thing you can do to link up with people that may not be on your PSN list that you want to play with. Like if you, so, like if you guys want to invite Tross to a Helldiver session, you guys don't have Tross on your friends list. But Tross wanted do. to... Oh, you do? Yeah, last time we played Helldivers, he added me. Oh, okay. Well, okay. What So... My my point being is if you wanted to invite Tross into your game and he wasn't on your friends list, you can send Tross a, a Facebook message or a Discord message, whatever the case may be, and Tross could just hit that link and he's into your game without him having to go through the step of becoming your PlayStation friend. But if it's I, going I, through Facebook and Discord, how is that getting onto your PS5? How are you joining another PS5 system? Because when you hit the link, it opens up your PlayStation app which then sends the signal to your PlayStation 5. I mean, I guess that works if you're a member if you if you're a member of stuff that people can see what you're doing. I listen. I, just, I don't think this is a replacement. I think this is just an extra step to make it easier to connect with people. I don't think this is designed to replace normal developers friends invites and group invites and stuff like that. I think this is just an extra step that to you yield and Alex is probably highly unnecessary. But to some people that play into, like, 
well, again, I'm going to the division. Like division, you can't do matchmaking for raids. You have to have you have to invite people. This is just an extra way of getting people to get into your raid that didn't have to go through a friend request. That's all this is. It's I, I don't think this is a replacement. I think this is just an easier way to get people that you may not be friends with already to get into your game without having to go through the uh, the process of having a friend the person first, then send the invite. I, but I see how you guys think it's highly unnecessary. I get that. And I'm not arguing yeah, that. Yeah. Highly unnecessary. But There are other things that could be done with the PlayStation 5 other than adding a feature that the developers do just fine. But then again, yeah, because I mean, if you're if you're sending this to like say a Facebook group to to have someone from a Facebook group, the division join you, you're then opening it up to anyone who sees that message, correct? Yes. Okay. But I mean, but in, but like I said, in my case, where I, if I want to get seven people to do a raid with me, you know, I'm going to open it up to people. Then okay, but I mean, if you're join a raid, if you're specifically trying to send something to Tross. On Facebook, I mean, I guess you could send it through Messenger where you don't have to be friends to send messages, but, I mean, Charles would have to accept the message since you aren't friends with him, but in, in most cases, you would probably be Facebook friends with that person anyway, so why wouldn't you be PSN friends with them? It, it, I don't know. Like, uh, I, 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 and Yield, what was your question? Why you can't just do it, would you say, about the raid? I said, then just join people's raids. But that's the thing, is you can't match make, so I can't, if I started a raid on Division 2... Well then, that's the, that's bad on the developer. Why would you do a raid solo? You can't do a raid solo. Well but then, how do you join a raid? You have to be fr- you have to be friends with them and invite them into the raid. It they designed okay. the ra- they designed the raids to be done uh, with your with your friends and whatnot. They they didn't want random people jumping into a raid. They wanted to be a community thing. Like the, you're going into a raid with your friends. Wow. Well, so if you're the only one who bought it, then you're host. Well, I mean, I'm assuming you would make friends. I mean, I, I met Tross through the but, division. But how can you do that if you can't join random games? You could join random games. You can't join random raids. Raids are the uh, you can't match make with. Everything else you can match make with. Well, then, by then, you would probably have friends on your friends list that you could do a raid with. Correct, but if I'm doing a raid and I need eight people and I don't have eight, seven friends online right now and I want to do a raid... I could put the link into the Facebook group and seven people can join my raid. But then you're not raiding with friends. You're just raiding with randoms. And then that Holy the fucking shit. Can we move on? <laughs> just, just, I mean, we're going I mean, to circles here. He's, he's talking himself into a circle. I'm and not. I, there's still. So let's leave it at this. There's still a lot unknown about this. It's coming out later this year. The social media sharing portion is still in development. We're not going to know the details. Done topic. Thanks. All right. Alex, All please right. move us on for the love Moving of God. On. Matt, you mentioned sharing there, and I'm sure that a lot of people are sharing in the love of Fallout <laughs> with the the Amazon Prime television show going on right now. And we've got more news from Bethesda and Fallout 4. Bethesda makes free Fallout 4 next-gen update available to those who receive the game via PlayStation Plus Collection. Uh, this comes from IGN. After some launch issues for Fallout 4's next-gen update for the users of the PS Plus, the update should now be available for those of you wanting to play. I assume this is just a PSA and not something we're going to talk about because yeah, what the hell else do was, you want to say? There was a whole bunch of issues when, it, when the next-gen update where PS Plus players couldn't access it, and now they could, and it's all fixed. So just... Hey folks, if you like Fallout 4 and want the next gen update and you have it uh and you're playing it because of PS Plus, go get your update. And <laughs> Arrowhead is updating Helldivers 2 yet again. Uh in May, we can expect a brand new war bond, a brand new premium war bond, I should say. Uh, this comes with the PlayStation blog and Dominic Wigan. Uh, new Helldivers 2 War Bond brings trap lane weaponry, Arctic theme armored. Uh, Arctic theme armor and uh, and more on May 9th. Helldivers 2 players will have access to purchase the new monthly war bond for 1,000 super credits or around 10 US dollars. Uh, it contains new guns, including the tenderizer, pummeler, and purifier. Man, those sound punishing. Uh, focusing on stopping power and other trap-based tools. New armor will provide cold theme items but carry buffs. 
hell divers are already familiar with finally new capes will be available for you to display your patriotism so be prepared so be prepared on may 9th if you're still playing oh man that's that's some foreshadowing there if i've ever seen any um did it say whether or not this cold weather gear because there are some planets where freezing cold and blizzards like slow you down did they say whether that has any difference at all no no well that might be a good fucking thing to say that might be a good thing to throw in the game there. I mean, they seem to think of everything, but man, that's one. That's a missed opportunity. If you have cold weather gear on, the cold should not affect you as much. You know? And, and there's a saying. description in there talking about protecting against the cold weather, but then all of the buffs on it is just like servo-assisted, so you can throw your grenade 30% farther. Uh, uh, I will say that of the new uh, costumes or armors that I've seen, looking very Star Wars-ish is that... Like, like we might be traveling to Hoth. We're not going to be, but does anyone else get that Hoth vibe from these looks? I can see that. Matt, is it, is it me? Am I crazy? I mean, they've got other Star Wars-inspired helmets as well, so, you know, there, there's definitely some inspiration there. Tricky, is this new Warbond going to bring you back to Helldivers, or more often? Uh, Probably not. Such a hater of democracy. I'm not. I'm not a hater of the game. It's, it's fine, tricky. It's, just, it's, it's fine. not. It's not in my. Uh, it's, it's not something I look forward to playing. I get it. Tricky can only have li- have limited fun in the game, and coming up, our friends at Limited Run Games. Wow, that's News a bad segue. Oh, well, oh. still worlds above you there. Um, Mr. Memory Lost, but Limited Run Games apologized for CDR discs after fan outcry. It says, working on a press disc solution. This comes from IGN and Taylor Lyles. Known for its process for creating limited availability physical editions of games that are generally digital only, Limited Run Games has come under some fire recently. Users on Twitter and Reddit pointed out problems, including the allegation they are pushing out burn, uh, games burned on CDRs. Uh, for those of you too young, this is a type of physical media. The problem is, instead of using pressed discs, which have data permanently encoded onto them and used for commercial releases, a CDR might have compatibility issues with the original hardware. The recent example includes D, the Collector's Edition, which will not play on the original 3DO system. Limiter and Games released a quote indicating there's difficulty in manufacturing the game for 30-plus-year-old systems and the testing did not capture the issue some gamers are running into. LR Games also indicates that they are, uh, excuse me, limited run games, that is. It also indicates they're working with new partners to find a new solution and will not be selling any new copies of the game until a permanent solution has been found. You know, I've never bought anything from limited run games, but obviously the fact that they sell physical copies of typically digital-only games is obviously a, it's, it's, you know, there is a market for that. You know, a lot of people with the push, you know, a greater push for people to gain physical copies when everything is going seemingly digital. There, there is a market for this. Um, but I haven't used limited run ever to buy anything. Cause obviously I've, I've made more of the digital transition transition than other people. Um, so who of you have used limited run and overall, what has your experience been with their stuff? I've only bought, uh, I'm sorry, yield. I got, uh, the Samurai Jack collection, but I haven't popped it in my system yet. And me and Yield both got the um, Jedi Survivor collector's edition but, from them. But that was, they didn't press that game. I got a disc. You didn't get a disc? I got a disc, but they didn't press it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I know Daryl gets a lot of the... Uh, or did get a lot of the limited run games because he was uh, getting a lot of the uh, back games. Uh, Matt, I'm going to defer to you on this. Like, obviously using a CDR is causing an issue, but aren't all games essentially pressed onto uh, a CDR-like type Blu-ray? Oh, Matt, is this kind of like what we used to burn CDs? Like when we were making a, like a mixed tape, like a, for lack of a better word, mixed tape for like a road trip when you had a bunch of MP3s and you burned them to a CD, like a cheap CD that you got like 30 of for five bucks. Is this, I mean, this is that kind of same process where it's just that cheaply done? Yeah, whereas a press disc, essentially, when you think of what old CDRs and it would burn it as the disc is spinning, 
a press disc essentially is by a process where the data gets implanted on the disc all at one shot and there's no like variation potential because you know if a computer shakes essentially it could misalign the laser so on the cdrs which are generally going to be lower quality discs as well there might be issues where it prevents it from playing on a a certain system or if something gets uh, uh, if there's a problem in burning the disc. So the issue here is that limited run went through their testing. They didn't come up with the issue. So they said, okay, all's good. Let's go full force. And then their partner was using CDRs instead of press discs. And then you get certain players who can't play the game. So unfortunately it sounds more like it's a quality assurance issue than a negligence issue. But you know, people are paying mucho dinero for their their games and being like, listen, if I'm paying this for a physical game, I want the physical game to be like just like it was coming out of Sony or just like it's coming out of Nintendo, which I think is a fair. Eh, I, w- I would almost say not fair because they're not Sony. They're not Nintendo. They're using what tools they can do, what partnerships they have to make games playable in a physical format. So you know, maybe there's some something to say you shouldn't be paying full price for that, but they're still licensing to sell these games, so they still got to follow the guidelines of MSRP. I, I, I mean, when I heard about this, it, it, the, the overall opinion I had was that they were coming under fire because they were looking that they were trying to cheapen out and save on their production cost. You know, saying we're not going to buy these discs, we're going to buy the CDRs, which are you know, much cheaper, and they were just trying to cut costs, and that's the backlash I I thought they were having. Not necessarily that they were trying to scam the 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 consumer, but they were just trying to cut costs, and like like I said, there was no issue in their testing, so they didn't see a problem with it. But obviously, there's a problem with it now, so now they're going back to fix the problem. They're saying we're not going to sell anymore until we fix this issue. It, it, am I off base? I mean, you guys feel the same way. No, you're 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 pretty much stating what the the issue was covered. Now the question goes back to what else has they, they've been using CDRs? But this being the first one, uh, as far as being outcry and outspoken, you know, maybe it's just gone unnoticed for years. Or maybe it's just incident. maybe it's just this specific partner that they worked with. Yeah, that I, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you a CDR versus a press disc. Like I, I look at them and go, Oh, cool. Hey, look, CDs, that'll be dead. in you know, a hundred years with, with disc rot. So. Anyways. Alex. Well, yes. Tricky. Yes. Why worry about disc rot when you can rot your brain with some adult theme fun in Jackbox Party? Uh, Jackbox is finally making an adult theme party pack. This comes from IGN and Taylor Lyles. Announced at ID at Xbox. The next party pack coming from Jackbox, Jackbox will have an adult theme series of mini games slated to release this year. No news on what types of mini games will be in the pack, but expect some mature theme hilarity as it is renowned in Jackbox games. So, uh, I can't believe it's taking this long. But I was going to say, I, I can't believe it's taking this long because every time I've ever played a Jackbox game, there's always something sexually related in the comments. It just devolves anyway, <laughs> so they figured they might as well embrace it. Yeah, this will be there more overt. I mean, time. after, you know, the success of Heart Cards Against Humanity, and I know when we played Apples to Apples in college, we tried to dirty it up as best we could. What's Apples uh, to Apples? Was, it's like a card game, a party card game. I've never heard of it. Wasn't it? Is it apples to apples just like, uh, you know, the, the politically correct or safe version of Cards Against Humanity? Kind of, yeah. I mean, I played it before Cards Against Humanity came out, so it might have been the, it might have come out before Cards Against Humanity. But I mean, you can still, you know, be in in your early twenties or your your late teens, you can still, you know, messy things up with your dear little mind, regardless of how clean they intended the game to be. I, well, that was what we did with Mad Libs back in the day. I, I never yes. played Cards Against Humanity. I always wanted to play it, but just never found a group of people that were playing it. Well, you should have had a housewarming party, Tricky. Yeah. Invite your adult friends over, invite the Grinellis, 
Uh, Trost yeah, requires to go to Stone Island. Does Trost live in New York? No, Trost lives in Georgia. Ah, okay. Uh, we'll invite Joe Priestley over. Get Joe Priestley over there, too. No, he's uh, he's my mortal enemy right now. Okay. Well, the, the, now and forever. I, 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 I would invite the Grinelli's over, but I invited the Grinelli's to take a road trip with me to Pennsylvania, and Matt essentially shut that down. Okay, no. All right. <laughs> Why do they want to go to Amish with. country? That, yeah, he wanted wait, 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 wait. So he's going to come out. He's going to drive the 45 to, minutes to an hour out here. Then we're going to drive two hours out to a buffet. Smorgasbord. Okay. Smorgasbord. To drive back. Like, I don't know about you, but after I'm done eating a buffet, the last thing I think any of us that is safe is to get behind a wheel. No, I, I, I say we drive out there. We go to the smorgasbord. We get a hotel for the night. And then we drive back the next day. Whoa, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Not, 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 not a hotel room together. Like he, the Grinnells get their own hotel room. I get my own hotel room. How gracious of you, Tricky! That's the most expensive buffet experience I've ever heard of. This must be a damn good buffet. Oh, it is. I I haven't had it in years. Like, uh, you better churn my butter table side. This is the world. This is the world's largest smorgasbord. And I got to tell you, it's absolutely fucking fantastic food. I used to go there as a kid. We, we used to go to uh, Pennsylvania, go camping uh, at Brandywine Meadows. And during that camping trip, we would go to Shady Maple. And oh, my God, the food is amazing. This is Maples. buffet food, right? Yes. Because the, the typical, like, blueprint for a buffet is we're going to put out a bunch of food because a lot of people – typically eat here, and you can eat whatever you want, massive plates, but the food's not that great quality because oh we have my, to make so much. No, Shady Maple is fucking unbelievable food. Unless it's a Korean barbecue, I can't make... Yeah, I, I can't put away the f- amount of food to make a trip like that worth it. Oh my god. I'm going to talk V into it, and then she's just going to make you go. And I love the fact that the food trip was, or the, the road trip was not to like go some to some famous location. Tricky wants to go to a buffet. This is a famous location. To who? When you get off, when you get off of this show, Google Shady Maple Smorgasbord, and just look. It's absolutely fantastic. Anyways, absolutely. Tricky, you're a little bit too in love with this food. Oh my! And I like food too, but my God, you're no. making it sound like a life-changing experience. Oh, it it is. It it, it really is. Listener questions. Tricky, hit the goddamn music. Time to check my social media. Yeah. All right. Who's in the host of the show? Is it Matt or is it Alex? Because Al- Matt's kind of taking over a little bit. Hey, you know what, Matt? Matt is pressed for time. <laughs> he's got some some CDs to burn with some some late '90s, early 2000s alternative music, so he's got to get off here. Tricky, do you have any of the questions coming up? I saw we at least had one from Facebook. Uh, I, I I got them up. Go ahead. I, right, I, I'll, I'll go through those because I'll give you a chance to read through the topic of the week notes, Alex. Tricky, uh, Tricky is is way too busy uh, daydreaming about smorgasbords over there. Oh my God! Will Schultz writes in. About PC players and the Helldivers 2 situation. Are they whiny cryberries? Crybabies are sticking it to the man. Uh, you know, Tricky said it's in the agenda, so we're going to go over that as our topic of the week. Best Star Wars game. Alex? Battlefront 2 for the PS2. Okay. Yield? Uh, close Rogue. second is Jedi Jedi Power Battles on the Dreamcast. Okay. Rogue Squadron. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have to go with uh, Fallen Order. Huh? I am going to put a put a uh, pitch in it for Vader Immortal, Vader Unleashed Immortal on the quest because it's a three episode thing. But the fun part of it is you get lightsabers and force powers to use to defend yourself. So it was a lot of fun there. I thought the fun part was going to be your Vader. No, you don't actually get to be Vader. Oh, well, that would have been a big selling point right there, Matt. Uh, but, I mean, a... being able to use force powers and lightsabers in first person, like in VR, is... I mean, that that's just, like, an easy... It's like, when VR was, like, first conceived, it's like, man, you know it would be really cool? To have a lightsaber. 
and you can get dual lightsabers. And then you could force choke a stormtrooper and bring him into your path to block shots as people are firing at you. All in first person. Um, we're going to skip a whole bunch of conversations going back and forth about Helldivers because we're going to touch on that shortly. Uh, Saber writes in, uh, since it's the week of Cinco de Mayo, did everyone celebrate Star Wars Day and they get drunk all night long? We obviously know that uh, that's not an option for me. But as far as his rest of the question, uh, he goes into a whole lot about the Cinco de Mayo history, which, um, yeah, sounds good. But his real question is, what Star Wars games says I really need a remake or an update? Uh, Tricky, we'll go with you this time. I'm sorry, I was looking at Shade Maple's website, sorry. Say it again. Good God. What Star Wars game it, like, is screaming for an update or a remake? <sighs> I'm going to have to say, and I think I'm stealing somebody's answers here because I think I saw this on uh, the answers, the, the original SNES games. You mean like Super Return of the Jedi? Yeah, stuff, those games. Huh? Fair enough. One of, them, one of them is actually on PlayStation Plus, isn't it? One of the old SNES Star Wars games? I believe Super Star Wars is. Okay. Well, that is actually going to be my answer. So you took my answer, so I'll, I'll just uh, co-sign that. Yield, do you have a Star Wars game that needs a remake or an update? Uh, Rogue Squadron. Which is uh, what you said in the comments. Actually, you know what? Yeah. Fuck it. I'll go, I'll go with Jedi Power Battles, my, my second okay. there. Yeah. I'm going to actually go back and say Shadows of the Empire. If you remember, it was an N64 game that came yes. out. And it's supposed to be stationed between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi focusing on the Black Sun, I think it was, and it focused on a new character that they introduced for, for specifically that game, as well as... Is it Dash Rendar? Yeah, no. da- Dash Render. Okay, yeah, because Kyle Katarn was the, was the uh, Jedi series, or not the Jedi series, the Dark Forces series. So, yeah, em- Shadows of the Empire. And uh, Jeff Hanna had some a choice visual regarding the Helldivers 2 situation. I don't think there are any other questions. So with that, Alex, you want to take us into the topic of the week? Yes, which that is a nice way to transition uh, because topic of the week is all about Helldivers and the controversy that has inflamed the community and the game. Um, so, yeah, let's just jump right into it. Uh, I believe this is from IGN. Uh, Sony is forcing all Helldivers 2 Steam players to connect to a PlayStation Network account, and it's going down about as well as you expect. And keep in mind, folks, that most of the people that play Helldivers 2 are playing on PC. And you would guess that the biggest chunk of those are on Steam. Uh, Arrowhead CD has also come out and apologized as Helldivers is review bombed on Steam. I just want to make great games. Um, An IGN article shared... And I know that actually the community manager for Arrowhead has come out and basically has told people to basically give negative feedback because they want Sony to hear the negative feedback in places that will matter as pointing to Steam and also asking for refunds because they're apparently battling Sony on this and trying to find a workaround because they're not they're not really happy about it. Uh, but, yeah, let's get into the story proper. Uh Editor's note, just let Matt run with this one. It's changing daily, and here are some of the things that have occurred. Sony announced that since the launch of Helldivers 2, the requirement to link your Steam account with a PSN account to play the game has not been enforced. Arrowhead CEO Johan Pilstedt stated in a series of tweets that it was not Arrowhead's decision to make this a requirement, but that they temporarily had lifted it during the game launch just to make, to be allow, allow people to play the game. Another tweet, Pilstedt said they know that this was a requirement for six months leading up to the game's launch, but didn't clearly communicate this enough during the launch in February. Unfortunately for players who purchased the games in territories that did not allow our users to create a PSN account, Pilstedt does not have any uh, good answers other than Arrowhead's internal talks with, in internal talks with Sony to discuss the next steps. However, Steam has already delisted the game for over 100 countries where PSN accounts are not legally uh, able to legally be made. In the time since the news was announced, Steam users have review-bombed the game, bringing it from unanimously positive to resulting in 
from over 84,000 negative reviews. Sony's only comment so far was this will allow them to more effectively handle griefers and cheaters in cross-play environments through bans and other countermeasures. However, PC players are calling BS on Sony, claiming it's a necessary step to collect and sell player data. Um, and I know Matt really wanted to uh, kind of go off on this, but I did. I was going to look through some of the articles that I read to, to get some points going here. Um, but yeah, it's clearly trying to get more and more people into the Sony ecosystem by forcing them to make a, uh, a PSN account or a, at least a PlayStation account. So, uh, Matt, sir, why don't you go ahead and, and take this ball and run with it? All right. So, facts. There are more Steam players playing this game than there were console players. That is a massive number of unaccountable players that Sony has to deal with. Currently, and if you remember when this game launched, there was a peak player count of 458, 458,000 concurrent players, and they had to up all of their server counts so that way they can handle all the, all the players coming in. Right now, in the past 24 hours, the game peaked at 110. So there's still a significant amount of players playing it, and there's still actually 71,000 players playing the game right now. And what's happening is there's now going back and forth between the community, the community managers, and Johan, who, who has been pretty active, surprisingly so, on Twitter, uh, where he's making statements. And I'm surprised somebody from legal hasn't told him to shut the F up because you're, you're going to continue digging yourself a hole in saying something that's going to be twisted. And it's currently happening in a... Twitter thread right now where somebody's saying, you said this. And he goes, well, I didn't actually say that. I said this. Let me clarify. I've only known Pilstead to be open and communicative during the entire process since this game launches. So he's earned a fair bit of, of leeway with me. The problem is Sony's statement, which they're forcing this requirement on Arrowhead. That's a fact. And, and we Arrow need to remind everyone that Sony published the game, so Arrowhead is kind of tied. Their hands are tied because Sony exactly. owns Helldivers too, essentially. So then the question comes in if, if with um, Pilstead saying, hey, we knew this was a thing leading up to the game, uh, up to the game launch, but we don't have any say in it. We can't do anything. However, it was his personal decision to lift that requirement during the game's launch so that way people could play because the servers were crashing, the the registration process for linking accounts wasn't working. It was, it was just overwhelmed. We are now three months into the game and there's some confusion or there wasn't clear that the it was going to be a mandatory requirement. And at the beginning, there's actually screenshots of PlayStations, of Sony's FAQ where it said linking would be optional. And now that FAQ says it's mandatory. So Sony has changed the goalpost. They've moved the goalpost down the line, so to speak. And on top of that, you now have all these, these countries where you cannot make a PSN account. So that, that leads to a couple different questions. How did Arrowhead, knowing that this was going to be a requirement, I guess Arrowhead wouldn't have had a decision in it. Sony was the one publishing these games across the different various countries. Arrowhead just developed the game, gave it to Sony, and Sony's now working with with the, uh, you know, the Steams and and the other systems to to actually deliver it. How did Sony allow this that they are okay with the game being sold in markets that you can't legally make a PSN account because if you use a VPN or say you're in a different locale than where you are, that's against Sony's terms of service and they could terminate your account. So for them not to be automatically offering refunds to these countries that can't make PSN accounts, that's the first issue. Well, the Steam, issue, well, Steam well, is well, doing that. Steam is offering like, refunds to people that can't make where, PSN accounts. Where, where did you see that? Because right now the only thing I've seen from Steam is that they are stopping sale of the game in those countries. I've seen threads where people are requesting refunds and have been granted refunds. 
So here's the thing. Eurogamer.net, there's an article out there. Um, it says, at the time of writing, it appears Sony is refusing to refund players unhappy with the directive, although some players maintain Steam has. And also, uh, the numbers are even worse because in this article, according to a Twitter account called SteamDB, uh, it's no longer purchasable in, purchasable in 177 countries and now has received 215,000 negative reviews. Yeah, so right now, stats on the game, Looking at the Steam review, it is overwhelmingly negative due to recent reviews of 251,000 reviews. Out of the 531,000 all reviews year to, or launch to date, it is now mixed. That is massive, we know. And here's the thing. Let's say Sony reverses this tomorrow. I guarantee you those players who went in and rated it negatively are not going to suddenly turn back and go, oh, well, let me rate it positively now. It's not going to happen. The damage has already been done. But do you think that the people that rated it positively went in and changed it to negative? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, I, but I, you don't I think... friends who rated it. But you don't think that they'll go back and change it back again? No, because that's just something you don't do, whether you agree with the decision or not. It, it's... It's the damage is done. You're now it. Some people are going to leave it up as a warning to say they could change at any point. Other people are just that type of person where they'll only leave negative reviews. They'll never do anything positive. It's like leaving a one star review on a, on an Amazon account uh, for a product because the shipping was delayed. Meanwhile, the company did absolutely nothing wrong. The product was fine. Uh, unfortunately, that's the nature of this internet commerce. So the problem goes back to is that, yes, Steam is granting some refunds. Other people are saying that Steam has denied them refunds. And the issue is you don't necessarily know because of the user-based commentary whether they're in a zone that you have to have a PSN account or you're from a country that you can't make one. The, can, the can, catch- I, can I jump in for a second real quick? I'm sorry. Yes. Two things. One, I have five PlayStation accounts. Mm-hmm. All different regions because when I was in my spamming days, I had a Europe account, I had a Japan account, I had an Australia account. That's against Sony's terms of service. You are not allowed to do that. Okay. That being said, but <laughs> tricky, stop admitting shit <laughs> on the podcast that you shouldn't be admitting. Well, I mean, any trophy hunter out there really does the same thing. Second, I, I mean, hey, don't you drag anybody out down there with you. I mean, pick your nose, eat your boogers, do whatever, but don't be shaming that shit on the on the podcast. Second, you get mad at us uh, for bringing up old shit. All right, second, can... Matt, you'll be able to speak to this, but the people that I'm here, <clears throat> excuse me, the problem I'm hearing with the Steam refunds, and I don't know this for a fact. You probably know this better than I do. Steam apparently has a policy. Where if you play the game for a certain amount of time, I heard 100 hours, but that sounds high. They cannot refund the game to you because you've played too much of it. The policy is two hours or two weeks. And they actually just recently revised this because you used to be able to play an early access game for however long you want. And if the game did not launch in 1.0, you could technically go refund it because it didn't count as two hours uh, as long as it wasn't two, two weeks. The, the thing is, just like any policy, somebody can grant an exception to that. So there have been players that have played this game for hundreds of hours and said, I don't agree with this policy. I never agree with this. It wasn't clear. It wasn't marked properly. And some people are getting refunds. Some people are getting denied. And unfortunately, that's, that's a Steam thing to deal with. But Sony should be backing refunds for players who cannot register for a PSN account in a country legally. Because again, if Sony detects that you've done something bad, um, they can terminate your PlayStation account. And why is a player going to risk that for a $40 game? So as I say, can someone vamp? Cause my garage door is going down. No, that's fine. It, it, it's the, the, and then there's the, the other aspect of this. Sony says, The reason why they're making this mandatory is because there's cross-play. You know, there's cheaters on PC. There's there's griefers all over the place. They want a system that can more effectively ban people, that they can have better control over the game. I get it, but also you can't tell me that all of your your 
fucking games out there, you're you're not managing things properly. Like you're not handling people. Like My, uh, is this the same thing with Fortnite? Did they require everybody in Fortnite to have a PSN account to crossplay? I, I, I legitimately don't know. I think you had to have an. What. My uh, my major gripe with this is the fact that they released the game, they sold the game in all these markets, and if they legit knew this was coming, they should not be, they should not have sold those games in those markets. That's my That's biggest. The, they also big they issue. also should have said this because it seems like Arrowhead knew this was coming and said nothing about it, and just sold but, the game. But is it? Well, but is it? Is it Ar- I'm sorry. Is is it Arrowhead's fault for not saying anything, or is it Sony's fault because they're the ones that published it? It is both of their faults. I I, I put this more on Sony than Arrowhead. Selling, anyone who had a hand in selling this game to people who now can't play it, they're both at fault. The CEO knew that it was a requirement, and he personally said in his tweet that he lifted it because he just wanted people to be able to play the game. And here's the thing. The CEO the of Arrowhead. Working. Right? The CEO of Arrowhead? The CEO of Arrowhead, okay. yes. However, it is out of Arrowhead's hands as to the requirement of having the PSN things of the PSN account, because Sony is now obviously saying everything you're past launch, you're good. Institute it. You have, you have to institute this. And they're saying we we've been working fine with it for months. And Sony is now a going to leverage the players on the PC because that's going to boost their, their player count numbers. You're going to, have greater control on Sony's going to have greater control on report systems and bans for people uh, in, in that. And, and you know, this wasn't covered in the agenda, but Sucker Punch quickly came out there and said, "Hey, you will need a PSN account for Ghost of Tsushima multiplayer, but you will not need it for single player." Now, Hell Divers being a live service multiplayer game, it makes sense. But this has been poorly handled on all sides of Sony and Arrowhead. And and the issue is people still don't trust Sony to handle their personal data when there's been multiple breaches of Sony systems. And I know in some aspects that's not fair because cybersecurity being what it is, it's only a matter of time until your data is, is broken. Yeah, into every, by everybody's had company. data breaches. But... Right. PC players don't want that. They go, if I don't have to associate with Sony, I don't want to, and it's been working fine. Alex? Well, I think that a lot of people, I think everyone's getting tired of having to, to make accounts for everything and have accounts here, there, and yonder and have so many different passwords. And like you said, have ways where somebody can break into your personal information, you know, so many different ways. Uh, I've got an article here from Tech for Gamers uh, written by Abdullah Wasim. Uh, Hell Divers 2 devs asked fans to leave negative views to convince Sony. Uh... Let's see. You think Arrowhead um, saying remove review bomb our own game? In surprising turn of events, the Helldivers 2 team is siding with the fans, encouraging negative reviews. Uh, while the future currently looks gloomy for Helldivers 2, things might turn out fine. The community manager Spitz has asked fans to voice their displeasure against Sony's decisions. He specifically points to Steam reviews and refunds since these will make the most significant difference. The community manager also admitted to being oblivious to the lack of worldwide PlayStation support until recently. Um, it seems the community has wholeheartedly acknowledged this statement. As a result, uh, recent reviews on the Steam page have turned to overwhelmingly negative. Steam is also refunding purchases regardless of time spent in the specific game. Um, let's see. We already heard that. So I'll, I'll jump in here for a second because I want to touch on the point of what you said. Where I, I don't remember if it was Spitz, but a community a community manager in Discord kind of was starting to pull that blizzard what you guys don't have phones it was literally a hey guys just make an account it's super easy you know it's quick it takes two minutes it's good and then somebody rose their hand in discord and said i can't make one they don't support it in my area and that's where you turn around and go i legitimately had no idea that there was areas that you couldn't make psn accounts so that's where they're telling you go you know the negative reviews i don't think he's asking for negative reviews but insinuating that the negative reviews and the refunds are giving us more of a bargaining voice. chips in our talks with Sony. I, also, if if uh, Pilstead, the CEO, knew about this, was it just him or did the rest of the team know? And if the other, if if this was just his decision not to talk about it and to lift the um, the requirement, like I mean, this is giving Arrowhead a, a very bad look, Sony and Arrowhead. But it seems like maybe the rest of the team did not know, and maybe only a few people at the top. Which again, if that's the case. That lands on Pilstead. Like he needed to come out. 
if this if Sony didn't come out and say something, he at least needed to say something because you again you are selling a game to people who now cannot play it. And oh. Matt, I'll, I'll get I'll go to you here in a sec. Hold on, we'll, hold we'll on. Go to Tricky for we'll go, hold on. I got one more thing to say. Dad. I think what they I think what Sony is very very much and recently uh, Xbox with uh, Yield and his experience on Sea of Thieves, what they are o- underestimating is people's unwillingness to take shit like people have a line in the sand and it's different for everybody to where you require them to do you know, take one or two steps they may grow and they may sigh and be like oh, really but you get to four five six you know where you make them making another count somewhere and people are like you know what gloves are off let's go because i'm sick of this shit you know people have their line in the sand and it seems like this is one of the lines that's been crossed for a lot of people not just people who can't now play it but a lot of people on steam who don't want to make playstation accounts but i mean it goes without saying that people who now cannot play this game because of this decision need to have their money refunded immediately that's that's just good that that just needs to be done uh um, tricky you had something you want to say in regards to no that. no no i just i just want because we've been dominating the conversation i just want yield to jump in and get his thoughts in because we haven't really heard yield on this yeah, Yield thinks that it's absolutely stupid that we're making it so hard to play video games. I, I The reason I wanted to go to you is because, like Alice pointed out, is you just recently had the problem with Sea of Thieves trying to link your account and whatnot. Now, that's a whole separate issue. That was a Microsoft, you know, having an issue linking your account. But, I mean, I, I, just, I just overall wanted to get your opinion on what do you think about Sony requiring this. Because to, to Matt's point... Or to what Matt brought up, so to speak, is Sony is saying they're doing this so they have better control over griefing and cheating and stuff like that. Well, for, first that, of all, Jay, ho- sorry, ho- I, hold I, I, on, I, 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 to you, but let me just say why does cheating matter? Because it's a PVE game. Who cares if people are cheating? Because it's everyone against the world. So you're not affecting well, me if you I, make the I think they, I think they're more worried about griefing and like the case, like my second game that I played Helldivers in. I I kept getting team killed like that. Makes the experience not fun for me and not make me want to play the game. So, so was it on purpose or was it I I I can't, of sight? I can't say it was on purpose, but I kept dying to um not hell bombs, but the 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 eagle bombs or whatever they're called. I kept dying Pardon to those. Okay. Now you know tr- that, tricky. Maybe that, you just need to get out of the way. Well, yeah. Things. Listen, there's, I'm, there's a red line that comes down from okay. the from the, the okay. orbit. Okay, to let to, you know that something's coming down, and you better get that. Alex, out of the way. To, to be fair, okay, I don't know if he was doing it on purpose or not. You're Sec- also colorblind, so maybe. Se- second point is I'm colorblind, so I can't see that. Third, in doubt, tricky is colorblind. Uh, so I, I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm, I I I look at it more as griefing than the cheating. But I I understand Sony's point of saying we need better control over this. I get that. Whether that's justified or not, I'm not taking a stand on. I'm not saying Sony's right for doing this. I think Sony's wrong for launching the game, letting people play for what two, three, four months now at this point. No, it's about two months. And we're, now we're, we're going on two and a half. I think. And now all of a sudden you're throwing this out there. And like I mentioned earlier, my biggest problem with this is not that Sony's making you link their account, is that they sold it in markets where you cannot make a PSN account. So you took people's money, knowing this was coming, and now you're saying, well, screw you, because now you can't make an account. And if Sony's not willing to refund those players, that's royally fucked up. Boo, Sony. Yay, Helldivers. Matt, sir, I think you had something you wanted to continue well, on with. Yeah, so I was going to go this, and and this is the conversation Pilstead had on. He said, you know, he was asked to make the mandatory, mandatory account linking six months before launch as the game was finishing up. On launch day, it was mandatory. However, uh, it, and it evidently was noted on the Steam page. However, it was disabled a couple hours after launch due to server issues. It was his decision. Otherwise, the game would have been unplayable for everyone. They notified the community they were suspending it temporarily, but would reinstate it in the future. But yeah, they're working their asses off for eight years, pouring blood, sweat, and tears, and worrying about if players will like their life's work is a good basis for a scam. Um, so yeah, it's honestly Sony's responsibility to refund players in those markets where they can't make these these accounts. Uh, that should be automatic. It should just be done it, to say, here's your money back. If you uh, want to buy our game again after we have all these conversations, that's fine. Um, there is some time. New players right now, I think it was, 
have to do it. Current players have until May 30th, I think, is the is the deadline. And to me, the security issue definitely is more griefing than cheating because the the cheating community on PC, again, to Alex's point, it's a PvE game. Now, there are players who are doing stuff such as, uh, you know, creating infinite resources, such as your samples, which if you're in a game and you get a share of that, could potentially impact you. And there was well, a shit. Where can I get infinite sample grief for friends? God damn it. Uh, just, just play the game. Well, again, you know, find the PC players. They're your best friends in this case. The issue is, is the game launched with a pretty intrusive anti cheat system. And there was a whole controversy of that. So cheating is honestly not the biggest issue here. It's the ability to report and, and ban griefers that Sony wants. But, the issue is, is there's no trophy attachment to this game. Like, they force you to have an account, but there's no trophies associated with playing on PC. So, again, Sony is making some really royally fucked up decisions as to, to saying, we knew that this was going to be mandatory. Arrowhead, this is going to be mandatory. And to, to the tweet follow-up to this, somebody asked... You know, they appreciate Pilstead's response, but how did you know, like, you sold it in areas that there wasn't going to be a PSN account? How do you, what's up with that? And Pilstead comes back and says, honestly, we don't deal with sales. That's Sony. That, they're the publisher. We just developed the game and hand it off to Sony. Sony gives us money. We develop the game. We give them the game. Sony sells it. And that goes back to the point, that's Sony's bag. They have to solve that and make it right for players who can't. And I have a feeling before they ever do that, they're going to make, they'd rather do the legal issue of trying to make people be able to have accounts in those areas where they previously weren't able to. It's everything smacks of nearsighted instant gains in player counts, which is going to make Sony's numbers look good, which means that they're going to look good to their shareholders and to the board. And it's, they're leveraging the PC community. And I've always said there's money in the PC community for them to have, but they have royally mishandled the way that this game is being done now. And people are going to be very uh, apprehensive about future Sony releases for fear that something's going to change. How, how many, yeah. co- how many countries was this? Uh... 177. Okay. I, <clears throat> I looked this up because I actually thought there were more. Uh, I just looked how many countries there are in the world, and there's only 195 countries in the world. So you're talking 100, uh, 177. You you're talking 18 countries in the world where this game is allowed now after this uh, this rule goes into place. That's a big chunk of the world that you're saying. I, I and the other question well, is, and I, in the world, but also you got to look at where is most of the money spent. And, and, so how much? How much of the money that Sony's making is made up in those eighteen countries? And, and here's the other question well, that not eighteen, but however many countries they are, less than twenty. And and he, here's the other question that I know nobody's gonna have an answer for, but why is PlayStation accounts not allowed in the, in those countries? <clears throat> like, what is, is it? I mean, I can understand somebody like South Korea or North Korea where they restrict the internet and stuff like that, but I I can't imagine that Sony's can't not allowed. China wasn't your first thing there. Well, either way, what I'm saying is I, I can't imagine why PlayStation or Sony account is not allowed in certain countries. Well, here's the bigger question. Why the fuck did Sony feel the need to do this? I mean, look, you already are getting your games on PC now. So whether people have a PlayStation account or not, you're still making money off the PC market. And to Matt's point, this negative reviews and negative you know, outlook at, at Helldivers and Sony as the publisher doesn't just affect Helldivers. It affects every release going forward because you can make enemies out of people – and they won't touch any of your shit going forward. People are that. I'm that vindictive. I'm that way. If a publisher or developer does something fucked up, I won't. I will be like, you know what? There's tons of other shit to play. Go fuck yourself. Um, so this can potentially affect games, Sony games beyond Helldivers on the PC. So honestly, for good press, it may have been better if they had just like completely just stashed this away and didn't make people do it. And just continue to sell Hell Divers and have people, you know, enjoy playing it, and then put your other games out on the PC market. Because now, with Sucker Punch saying that about Ghost of Shima, you now put a target on Ghost of Shima where people are like, "Oh, well, you know what? I'm not playing that game." 
So overall, I don't know why Sony did feel the need to do this. I, I, just, I, I just can't understand why Sony would sell this in the country that they know they can't make a count in. It's kind of like yeah. you're you go to the zoo and you're like you're at you know at some exhibit and you're like throwing or like poking some like big animal like a bear or something with a stick. I don't know where what zoo you'd be close enough to a bear to poke it, but the Bronx you're zoo. pissing people off. You're you're exact. You said the Bronx Zoo. Yes. Okay. Well, um, must be something in the water. Uh, but you're pissing people off by doing this. You did. You're doing no good with this. So. And, and meanwhile, Arrowhead's taking the brunt of. And I don't, I don't, and I don't think Arrowhead's the problem here. I think this is a hundred percent Sony. Okay, well, this also this also strains the relationship with Arrowhead and Sony. I and I don't think it's wholly on Sony because again, Arrowhead made the game; they made the decision to stop the requirement during sign-in. They could have said, "Fuck it, you know, this is Sony's bag. Let Sony deal with the aspect that it wasn't working at launch." Um, but no, they did something right for the players. And as a result, we've had two and a half months of flawless Helldiver playing. I, I can't say flawless, but y- you know what I mean. It's been great. I have 100 hours in the game, played with you guys, had a great time playing with other people on PlayStation. And here we are. They are single-handedly, Sony is single-handedly killing their game and ruining all of the goodwill that this game made for the PC players. This, because, this is the number said, one selling game of 2024 so far. What was that? This is the number one selling game for this in year. The, in the U.S. Yes. Is, is it just the U.S.? I thought it was in the world. I'm pretty sure it's just the U.S. But again, I looked at that list tricky that you shared. There wasn't an impressive amount of... Uh, there's There weren't impressive titles because a lot of those were like from last year as well. So Our, they've killed the goodwill. They're killing the sales. I think they're going to lose a bunch of sales as more people in those regions that can't make a PSN count are are uh, are, are, are issued refunds. And yes, there is a lot of talk about saying PC players are just being crybabies and that you know it's just an account, make an account. Some people don't want accounts. There's a whole slew of PC players that say fuck Epic Games. I'm never getting. I don't care how many free games they give away. They're bad for the for the industry. They're bad for the business. I am not giving them any money. I'm not giving them any account creation. Um, you know, there's legitimate people say, this is the only game I play that Sony put on the PC. Why do I have to make an account just for this single game when I'm only ever going to play with other Steam players? It's been working. What what's the issue? So it's it's again. They are cutting off their nose to spite their face for short-term gains, and they have lost the war on long-term uh, goodwill. All right, Yield, I, I know I'm not in charge of the show, but Yield, do you have any final comments on this? No. It shouldn't be this hard to play video games. Don't care whose fault it is. Shouldn't be this hard. Microsoft, Sony, Steam, doesn't matter. Wiser words were never said. All right, y'all. Well, that is going to bring us to the end of our topics. Uh, how about we do some uh, close it out with some shout outs, y'all? Yield, I'm going to go to you first. Uh, shout out to Alex, Matt, and Tricky for recording tonight. Shout out to everybody who hung out in the Twitch chat. Uh, Yeah, shout out to everybody, to pimp, all the pimps and mouths of the whoredom. Thank you for downloading, listening, hanging out with us. Catch you later. Matt. Shout out to my fellow hosts for what was actually a very halfway decent debate. I thought I was going to devolve even further, but I think we were all <laughs> in the same, same mindset there. Uh, shout out to the communities, the Saw Saber and chat. Uh, I don't recall seeing anybody else. Shout out to the Channel 3 community. Make sure to go to channel3.gg to gamify your social media, play some mini games, earn some XP for interacting with your fellow gamers. And shout out to my wife, V, for everything she does on and off the show. Saber says he's still here. Hi, Saber. Staying strong to the end of the show. Tricky. Shout out to uh, especially you guys for dealing with me tonight. Uh, I. Notice myself starting to doze off halfway through the show, not because of the conversations, just because these medicines are kicking my ass. Uh, 
yeah, just it's it's been a rough week. Um, I'm gonna be doing some XY streams because I'm gonna be out of work for a while. Um, if you guys uh, want to reach out to me, I didn't want to put it too much out on the show what happened, but if you guys want to reach out to me to uh, you know ask what happened, I have no problem talking to anybody. Uh, but you know, just know that for the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be really struggling and uh, healing. Um, and shout out to you guys, like I said, for putting up with me and, you know, my crankiness and my forgetfulness and stuff like that. Uh, That's said, the thing about me. I'm I, always cranky. I, Saber says you need to get a game and then it's centered, can play older games, and people can watch you struggle with older games. Yeah, go play Ninja Guide and Tricky. I already beat that two years ago. I'm not doing that yeah, again. Okay. No, 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 no. He's not talking with the rewind and the safe feature. Go beat Ninja Guy. Oh, no. I, I got no shot at doing that. I couldn't even beat it as a kid. Um, Shouldn't you be better now than you were as a kid? Go, listen, go, I don't, go beat Ninja Turtles. Listen, I don't know about you no, guys. No, that, fuck that game. I don't, I don't care. I don't, I, I don't, use, a, use a fast forward feature on that game. Fuck that game. I, I don't know about I you. I did it. You went all the way through that entire game and beat it. Uh-huh. Like Green Without Hat using probably, fast probably, forward. It was probably only once, and I got incredibly lucky, but I do remember beating Ninja Turtles on the NES. Were you using a Game Genie? No, I couldn't afford a Game Genie. <laughs> uh, Saber says, I would watch you play the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the Super Nintendo, even the 14, the GameCube. The 14? I, I, am, am I missing something? What's the 14? Yeah, that wouldn't have been for the GameCube, because that would have been way after the GameCube came out. What is the 14? Maybe maybe he means the 2014 game. Oh. I don't know. There's been a lot of Turtles games. Or the PK. And pretty much all of them after the 2000s I have not played. Or the PK Donald Duck game, which was actually pretty lit. Say, you're confusing the hell out of me. It might just be me. Uh, shout out to the goddess. Shout out to Sweet Mama D. Shout out to the New York Rangers who are kicking some ass, man. Making me a... Uh, Really glad to be a Rangers fan at this point. Uh, Twerp you to Joseph Priestley, who can go suck a dick. Because uh, every time he says something to me, it's fuck the Rangers. Uh, so, uh, And that's it. Shout out to everybody who listens to the show. Uh, Saber, I'll look into uh, the PK Donald Duck game and the Teenage Mutant Turtles game. I think that's on the SNES Classic, right? You mean Turtles in Time? I, I, was there more than one Turtles game for the Super Nintendo? That was the only one that mattered, if you ask me. Yeah, I think the Hyperzone heist was Genesis only. That was Genesis, yeah. It was essentially the G- Genesis version of Turtles in Time, but it was truncated. It had fewer levels. The very first Nickelodeon one, which was on the GameCube, he says. I'm pretty sure I played that one. Um, Maybe. I was not a, I mean, being a Turtles fan of in the 90s, I was not a huge fan. It wasn't bad. I just wasn't a huge What's, fan of the... the didn't the recent that. Turtles game have, like, all the old retro games in it? The one I gave yeah, you for using I mean, the it's, fast-forward it's, feature? Yeah, but it's not the uh, it's it's not the newer ones. Are you talking I old? Think the, I think Turtles in Time or Hyper Sun Host were the latest, like, the last games in that series. Well, they had the Tournament Fighters games. They also had the... Uh, but after the SNES and the Genesis, I don't think there's any Turtles games that are on that collection. All right, well, shout-out to all the fans. Thank you. Alex, your shout-out, sir. I'm going to give a shout-out to the community, the fuel to the fire, this trophy horse. Thank you all very much for continuing to support us and uh, listening to us ramble on these Sunday nights. However you choose to support us, we appreciate you so very much. Shout-out to all the hosts joining me tonight, which would be Yield, Matt, and Tricky. Shout-out to my awesome and loving girlfriend, Ashley. I love you, hon. Um, yeah, that's about all I got right now. All right, hold on. Uh, I just want to point out because uh, JT put a link in the f- Facebook group. Um, uh, it's a YouTube video about how a lawyer breaks down the law on Helldivers 2. Um, it was an 18-minute video, and you literally posted it right before we started recording. So I will go over that video, and I'll have the guys watch the video, and we'll discuss that next week. Okay. Sounds good. And uh, thanks to JT for posting that video. But... We will get into that later. That is going to bring us to the end of episode 620 of Trophy Horse. Thank you all for listening. And until next week, happy trophy hunting. See ya. For everyone except for Matt. Rabbit G Jet. 
that's a Transformers reference. The theme song is Venus by the band Even off their album Z. Permission granted by the band and 12 Stone Records. You can find them on Facebook by going to www.facebook.com slash Even Philippines. 